Hi there. In this video, I'm going to talk about how we determine the gravitational field strength. And the context of this will be tying into universal gravitation. And uh, some of Kepler's laws might be in there as well. Okay, so when we talk about gravitational field strength, uh, we want to really, fields in general in physics, we're talking about action at a distance. A magnetic field can have an impact, it can arise, cause a force to arise at some place far away from it. A gravitational field can also cause an impact somewhere in the gravitational field, depending on where you are. The strength of this, so if you have this object that you see here above the Earth, it experiences a force based on its location in the field. If it was closer to the Earth, it would receive a larger force. And if it was further, that's not what I wanted, if it was further from the Earth, the force it would experience is less. And the way we define that force is through this field strength. We determine the strength of the field based on its location and the uh, mass itself that's there. Okay, but really it's either the mass that's experiencing the force or the field could be determined by the mass of the gravitating body, the body that is creating the field. Okay, so one way to think about this is to think of the force that's exper being experienced by the object and the mass of the object itself. So we would have force of gravity towards the Earth and the mass of that satellite. That would be one way to determine G, which is going to be our gravitational field strength. So since, let's move that down a little bit, since the force depends on the mass, then the strength of the field really only depends on the mass of this big rock right here, the mass of the Earth. And let's see what that looks like on the next page. Okay, so the force of gravity using the universal law of gravitation, we could use G mass 1 mass 2 over distance squared, where this little m would be mass of the satellite, the capital M would be mass of the Earth, and the R would be how far away it is. So it's the distance in the question. So then when we're, we're dividing here, this is the mass of the satellite from the last page. So this is mass satellite, and that's why the mass of the satellite cancels out. So we could determine the gravitational field strength around any object as the universal gravitational constant times the mass of the object that is creating the field dividing by how far away you are from the field squared. And if we were to then look at an example of, let's calculate it for the Earth, what we would need then, we'll do those problems in just a minute, but if we were going to calculate G for the planet Earth, then what you're going to need for that is let's say you were on the surface of the planet Earth and you want to calculate the gravitational field strength. Well, most people are thinking, uh, isn't it going to be 9.81 meters per second squared? That seems to be the value of G. Is that going to be the same as the gravitational field strength? Let's find out. So the mass of the planet Earth, we're going to use this formula, the mass of the Earth is 5.979 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. You look that up from data tables or what have you. The next thing you need to look up is the radius of the planet Earth. And the average radius of the Earth is 6,371 kilometers. So R is 6,300 kilometers. 71 kilometers. So we'll make that 6,371 and add three more zeros. So 6,371,000 meters. And G is a constant. So let's plug those numbers in. 6.67 times 
times 10 to the negative 11 Newton meter squared per kilogram squared times the mass of the Earth, 5.979 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. We divide that by 6371000. Meters, and we have to square that. And I'll grab a calculator and we'll see what that equals. Okay, so you plug all of that into our calculator, and I seem to get a value of G of 9.825, and we'll figure out the units in just a second. So 9.81, depending on your location depending on how far you are, your altitude at any given point, the Earth does bulge. So the 9.81 in our New Brunswick, Canada, in our province, would be very close to 9.81, but it actually varies to different points. So we use 9.8, that's what we choose to use. Your teacher may just say 10 to round it off, that's fine too. Okay, so let's take a look at all these units. Okay, so I kilogram squared and kilograms, so I guess one of those is going to cancel out. I see meter squared in the bottom and meter squared up top, so that seems to cancel out. So I'm left with newtons per kilogram. Well, that makes sense from my first formula that said it was Fg over m. It was the force divided by the mass. Well, if you have newtons per kilogram, if you remember, so that's, by the way, that's one way to write this. Newtons per kilogram. Great answer for field strength especially, because fields are defined as newtons per kilogram for a gravitational field. But you may remember that a newton was a kilogram meter per second squared, so if you were dividing that by kilograms, that is equivalent to an acceleration. The gravitational field strength in newtons per kilogram is equivalent to the acceleration in meters per second squared. All right, so I want you to take that formula that you've just seen as either working out the gravitational field strength as force divided by mass or working out gravitational field strength as G capital M over R squared. There's two masses. So if you're using this formula, this is the mass that is experiencing the force. And the other formula is for the mass that is generating the field. It is two different masses. The one that experiences the force in the field is this mass here. The mass that is creating the gravitational field, you would use the second formula, gm over r squared. So whichever formula you feel you need to use, Try these questions from 649 and questions from 684 and see how you make out with those. Good luck.